Namaste G. Welcome to the YouTube channel of Goswami Kriyananda and the Sunday Noon Meditation Service for the Temple of Kriya Yoga Chicago. I'm Swami Ganamudra Ananda. It is always wonderful to be here with everybody and uh, for these Sunday Noon Meditations, hopefully live and in person again soon. Today we're simply going to talk a little bit about ancestral healing. One of those things in life that we probably don't give much attention to. It is truly one of those things that can, well, it can help us in life. In addition to helping ourselves, it can help to heal the genealogy and the memory tract for those who have left before us and those that will live after us as well. And this healing, this whole energetic grand continuum helps to heal those around us in this day and in this time. And today I'd like to lead off with, uh, it's a passage from a book by the wonderful author, Henry Miller. And if you haven't heard of him, I urge you to look him up. It just feels apropos to what the lecture here will cover. It goes like this, quote, I have a theory that at the moment one gives close attention to anything, even a blade of grass, it becomes a mysterious, awesome, and indescribably magnificent world in of itself. I've tried this experiment 1,000 times and have never been disappointed. The more I look at a thing, the more I see in it, and the more I see in it, the more I want to see. It is like peeling an onion. There's always another layer and another and another, and each layer is more beautiful than the last. This is the way I look at the world. I don't see it as a collection of objects, but it's a vast and mysterious organism. I see the beauty in the smallest things, and I find wonder in the most ordinary events. I'm always looking for the hidden meaning, the secret message, I'm always trying to understand the mystery of life. I know that I will never understand everything, but that doesn't stop me from trying. I'm content to live in the mystery, to be surrounded by the unknown. I'm content to be a seeker, a pilgrim, a traveler on the road to nowhere." End quote. And that is Henry Miller. And thank you, Henry, for all of your amazing literature. We're all like the sun. We go through a life cycle. And when the sun exhausts its fuel, it dies. But it does not truly die. It changes. It shifts to a different state on an atomic level just like our bodies when they pass. They both have virtually the same action. They will produce a large energetic output and then pass away or transition. Because the energy that makes us up, the energy that makes up the sun does not, does not die. The energy simply transforms. In the sun's case, it actually creates new stars and planets and indeed helps facilitate new life all over the universe. The energy of the sun, the energy that fuels me, us, on an atomic level and indeed all energy transforms into something else when it exhausts its original fuel. Nearly all of the elements that make up the human body, that make up all of life, are made in either a star or a supernova. And these atoms, or the essential elements of life, make up approximately 97% of us, as well as our galaxy. These elements become more dense and more prevalent towards our own galactic center and our own galaxy's black hole of Sagittarius A star. 
were all essential connected sparks of stardust. We walk on this living entity, the earth. The earth is a living thing. Everything on earth, rocks, trees, flowers, animals, insects, and fish are all made from the atoms of stardust. It is a living mycelium, a mutual interdependence, one where we are all connected to all that is, our fellow human beings, animals, the environment, the earth, and the universe as a whole. It is a mycelium. It is a bio-natural metric, the matrix, if you will, the interconnected network of all that is. A full 90% of the trees and plants on this earth are involved in a mutually beneficial relationship. And this also applies to the universe as a whole. In science, it is known that over 80% of all matter in the universe is made up of a material that has never been seen. Just like the mycelium of earth, most, most of which has also never been seen. But on a grand scale in the universe, this is dark matter. And dark matter is spread throughout the universe in a net-like pattern, in a web-like connection where everything is connected. And gravity acts the same both inside and outside of our solar system, inside and outside of our galaxy, and inside the universe as a whole. So this is a clear scientific sign that this is the web of the universe and that it is interconnected, that it is a grand mycelium, a mycelium that connects everything up to and including our ancestors. In physics, this is known as quantum entanglement. And in this, entangled particles are considered part of the same quantum system. The distance between these particles do not matter. Information or energy can be shared instantaneously, regardless of the distance in the universe. This is life on an atomic level. But this is what life is. And we remain part of life always, just as the energy of our ancestors remain with us as well. And here on Earth, we are part of nature, not apart from it. We are part of this whole existence on Earth. There is no separation between life. We are all life. Everything on Earth, everything that we see, everything that there is, has an atomic energetic footprint to it. So to survive and to thrive and to help our loved ones carry on to survive and to thrive into the future is truly on an individual level. For thousands of years, many tribes of the earth, most notably recently the Native Americans thought of and practiced the concept of what we do on the earth today should not only be sustainable today, but for many generations after as well. The ego of the moment for them was released. They were able to practice and live in such a way that was harmonious for them, that was harmonious for their ancestors before them, and will be harmonious for many generations to come for their ancestors and their loved ones after them. This is the thread that helps to bring harmony generationally through our own bloodline, as well as spread out to life and the earth as a whole and around us as well. And in the sky with the jets above us too. It's to treat all life and all of the earth as part of the ecosystem of the whole universe. Now, as most of us are 
probably aware, the effect of any cause can be felt from a few moments to many millennia. The sound and the vibration of a ringing and bell that uh, slowly dims, gravitational waves, the cosmic radiation background caused by the expansion of our universe, which we are still studying today, just beginning to study. A place, an area, or a structure where beautiful events have happened. A place, an area, or a structure where terrible events have happened. You can feel the effects of it long after the event has passed. Whether it be a calming, harmonic feeling, such as the bird chirping here, or an uneasy feeling, the feeling that's described when people describe something or a place as being haunted. This is all atomic energetic residue. And finally drawing into a more human level, as our dear Goswami Kriyananda said many times, we take on the qualities of that which we approach. It's much in the same way our parents would like us to have the qualities that uh, they have. Loving parents, generous parents, kind parents. They want their children to have those qualities as well. Conversely, parents that are filled with angst and hatred and racism also want their children to follow that example. And both are viewed as something to be passed down. I believe it is an honor, of course, to pass something harmonious down to our loved ones, to our lineage. But we must recognize that we naturally inherit the qualities of that which we are closest to. It is an energetic thread that exists within generations. If it is uh, an inharmonious quality, then we must learn to break away from that gently, much as we learn not to touch a, a hot stove. It's really, that is the first step to breaking away from any inharmonious pattern, any inharmonious ancestral proclivity. It is the recognition that on an atomic level, genes that are passed down hold on to a certain energetic residue. In yoga, it's been discussed many times as karma, which certainly isn't far off. But on a scientific level, level on a data-driven level, it has been shown that these genes that are passed down, pass down many things like anxiety, for example. And individually, it can manifest even stronger in someone two generations down. But conversely, the anxiety gene may be softer generations down. So you see, nothing is written in stone. You see many times that children are born into very difficult situations and they carry on with those difficulties. They don't escape the anxiety, the violent thought, the things that are very inharmonious. Yet you do see children that are born in difficult situations break that thread. They break that thread of inharmonious ancestral genealogy. And that is a wonderful thing to see, to watch someone escape a harsh environment and help individually produce a harmonious environment for themselves and others around them it is just important, just as important to recognize that a harmonious home environment does not guarantee that no ancestral healing needs to be done. Every one of us living in the human realm have our own individual to stay yogic, we will call it karmic difficulties to overcome. We do. There's no question about it. That's part of the human realm. And on the biological level, these difficulties exist within our own genes. So it is vital. It is key for us to recognize that 
There is no static linear conclusion in anyone's life, in our genealogy. It is truly that recognition that we are a part of life, not apart from it. Just as we are a part of our ancestors, not apart from them. And I guess in many ways, that is, this is the theme behind today's new meditation service and lecture. The recognition that we carry the atomic genealogy of our ancestors within us. We pass down the atomic genealogy as well. Just as we speak different languages here on earth, we should learn or try to understand the language of speaking to those that have come before us, our loved ones, our loved ones that are no longer here. But how do we speak to them? Well, we speak to them through energy. We are all made of stardust. The atoms that have existed do exist and, to, and continue to exist have a certain frequency. They have a certain vibration and indeed have a certain language. So we need to figure out to decode that language, to decipher that language, to communicate with all of our loved ones, past, present, and future, or on an atomic level. And one of the easiest ways is through divine, unconditional love. But it is truly up to us individually, right here, right now, with our thoughts, our words, our actions, and our love to build a harmonious environment within ourselves. Because this harmonious environment not only affects us, it has an effect on our loved ones and our future generations. And it also helps to heal our ancestors that have come before us. All of these things are created and webbed around us. We have beautiful opportunities every day to keep the healing vibration within ourselves and to extend that healing vibration out to all of our loved ones. It is truly a magical, beautiful gift that we can give. And I am sure I have received that gift from my mother and my grandmother before her and much of my own bloodline and, and lineage. And conversely, I know, at least I feel I know, I have helped to heal some of the wounds that may have been there for some of the people on my grandparents' side. There have been many difficulties I know that have come down through my bloodline. So to extend that love, to extend that unconditional love to them, to give part of my heart to them, to give part of my healing vibration to them, to connect with them on a quantum level, on an atomic level, through the web of the whole universe, speaking the language of love. It is a language that is undeniable, yet as our dear Goswami Kriyananda once said in one of his lectures about uh, uh, the people coming to find God, I'm paraphrasing, but uh, he said that he would hide in the uh, hardened hearts of humans because they would never think to look there, but we should look there. It does begin with us. 
So let's affect that change. Let's be the love and extend it out to not just our own bloodline, to everyone as well. Let's take a few moments of quietude. Let's go ahead and close our eyes. Turn our gaze to the sun center. Just take some nice, easy breaths. And as you're taking these nice, easy breaths, feel your heart, feel your own heart, feel the love in your heart. And take that love and extend it out into your cells of your body, out to the tips of your fingers, the tips of your toes. Let yourself radiate this love. Be the love that you wish to see in the world. And extend that beautiful vibration of love outwards outwards to everyone that has come before you, everyone that has come before us, everyone with us now, and everyone that will be after us as well. And now let's just take a few moments of quietude and just keep practicing, just keep extending this love out to your own lineages, out to your own bloodlines. Let all of that love filter into the web of the universe. With each inhale, inhale love. With each exhale, exhale love. And extend it. Extend that energy out into the web of the whole universe. Let it reach every loving being. Let it reach everything. Everything that is, is a living entity. Everything is alive on an atomic level. Nice breath in, inhale, inhale the love. Release and extend it. Nice breath in, inhale the love. And release it to all that is. One last time. Inhale the love, big breath in. Fill your reservoir, fill it, fill it. Hold it for a moment, let it build and release it to all that is.
Mm, wonderful. Give yourself a smile. And when you are ready, go and wiggle your fingers and toes and you're welcome to open your eyes and return yourself to the room or whatever space you're in. Hmm. And I'll leave us today with a special prayer that I like to read. This is by Swami Omkar. It's from the selections from the world's most sacred literature. And this is called the prayer for peace. Adorable presence, thou who art within and without, above and below and all around. Thou who art the eyes of my eyes, the ear of my ears, the heart of my heart, the mind of my mind, the breath of my breath, the life of my life, the soul of my soul. Bless us, dear God, to be aware of thy presence now and here. May we all be aware of thy presence in the east and in the west, in the north and in the south. May peace and goodwill abide among individuals, communities, and nations. And this is my earnest prayer. May all beings everywhere be happy and free. May all life everywhere in this grand web, this grand continuum of the universe, know happiness, love, and peace. My deepest shantis to everyone, have a blessed day. Have a blessed week.